Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It was confirmed this week that the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill has not yet been tabled in Parliament. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the ERA Bill and why is it important? Well this is about really the architecture of the future electricity supply industry in South Africa. We know that traditionally and it served us well for many decades until probably the last two decades it hasn't. We've had a vertically integrated industry structure dominated by a single utility in the form of Eskom and then at the distribution end a very disaggregated sector with municipalities uh, playing a big role and Eskom also having a distribution company. And uh, as I say it's been okay up until about 20 years ago and then it started we could see the, f the failures in the system coming to the fore. So there's been work to try and make an industry structure that's fit for the future. And you need this legislative environment and the regulatory environment and then the actual industry structure all talking to each other. And that's what this, uh, hav having this new um, uh, legislation is all about. And it's seen as, as quite important because of the changes in the te technology that have happened. We have a much more decentralized potentially much more competitive generation sector. The, the wires business is going to be still very much a monopoly enterprise dominated by an, an state-owned company, probably the National Transmission Company of South Africa, which is in the process of being unbundled from Eskom. And then at the distribution end, also having probably a different structure there ultimately. We, we have tried to restructure that industry once before under the red system, the regional electricity distributors, that failed on constitutional grounds. But that sector is definitely a very weak link at the moment and is failing regularly in many suburbs and townships and uh, rural areas. There's a requirement to really get the, the legislative framework in place for possibly a different industry structure there. So it's very important as we uh, have more, for instance, generators in the mix, not, not just Eskom, to have a level playing field at that level. And the bill uh, is important for that. We can obviously make steps without it, but it, the current legislative environment is very much geared towards the vertically integrated uh, business model. So it's not really fit for the future. So it's a priority that we get this, uh, this bill to level the playing field at the generation end, to have clarity around uh, the, the way the market structure is gonna be and the transmission end and how, for instance, electricity will be wheeled and uh, what the charges will be for that. So that the market codes for that and the regulator will regulate within that space as well. And then setting the, the scene for a, a more rationalized, probably, distribution sector that is also more competitive ultimately. Cabinet approved its tabling in March. Why has there been a delay? I think that is the big question. So as you say, March, we, we've had a cabinet saying this needs to go to parliament so that parliament can begin its processes. There was obviously always tidying up to do of these bills that so goes to the state law advisor. But it seems that in that process, it re there was a realization that actually there's some fundamental issues with this bill. And I think Operation Vullenlela that was named by the director general uh, as, as raising issues so they had to rewrite portions of the bill so but we then got told by government and business on august the first that this bill had been tabled on the 20th of july so it came as something as a surprise that this bill actually hadn't been tabled on the 20th of july it had just been introduced to parliament which seems to be a different process entirely uh, to give them a heads up that this is coming but you know Parliament can do nothing until a bill is properly tabled by the minister. Now, why it hasn't been done, there's speculation. You know, maybe the DMRE or the minister in charge uh, of the DMRE is not fully in favour and maybe he's putting a few spanners in the work. That's not clear at all. Maybe it was just that the drafting was poor and it needed this uh, additional work. I think it is better that a cleaner bill goes to Parliament. It's very startling because at that 1st of August meeting with the President and Big Business, this was identified as a priority area, other than the unbundling yeah. of ESCOM, which is proceeding even under the current legislative and regulatory environment. Um, uh, it, there will be limitations to it. But other than that, this is the next big 
uh, architectural change to the electricity supply industry and it's seen as urgent to try and get this through during the current parliament and these delays uh, raise questions. What is the likelihood of the bill being approved by the current parliament? Well, I think what the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee is saying is that if they don't have it by September, there's no way. So we've got a few weeks, <laughs> really, to get this bill tabled, and then it will be very, very difficult. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a big bill currently going through that Portfolio Committee, in the, the Upstream Petroleum Resources Development Act or bill, and that's been a major process, a major. They've gone around the country, consultations took place in every province around that bill, and they had uh, hearings. Uh, they've then been cleaning up from their side, and they still haven't finalised their work on that, and that's still underway within that committee. And then it still has to go to the, the National Council of Provinces. So that, if that's the template we're going to use, there's no way that before in an election year, <laughs> that's because that's what next year is going to be. So this parliament will run uh, ahead of that election year. So parliament will close for its December recess and only resume work, you know, once the state of the nation happens in February. And then there'll be a scramble, really, to have all the public hearings, uh, all the processes, and then t for the NCOP to do likewise, to get this done during the sixth parliament is going to be a very, very tall order as it stands. The line in the sand seems to be the September date now. If we get it by September, yes, and they'll probably have to streamline the process. So I think driving around the country, having public hearings in every capital, uh, every provincial capital, I think is going to be very, very difficult, especially if you want both houses of parliament. And there's a feeling that there might also need to be a debate at a provincial parliament level. So if that's the case, then I think it's very much touch and go as to whether this parliament can approve this bill. So let's see, uh, the, the chairperson has said September, but I think even September is going to be a very, very tall order. But it is a priority and it can be done, I think, if there's really shoulder to the wheel. But you know, not all the <laughs> political parties are going to agree with this bill and it needs to be properly scrutinised by society as well and debated. So it's really between now and we don't know when the, the election is, but it could be as early as May next year to get a bill of this magnitude through Parliament, both houses and potentially being also deliberated at provincial parliaments is a very, very difficult ask. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.